I've been wanting to do this for ages. You need to see this. This is how I transformed this into a cave wetter terrarium. I'm Max, and I have some fantastic beasts. Ever since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with ectotherms. Reptiles, amphibian, fish, invertebrate insects. All the animals generally people don't understand. But I think these animals are incredible. I live in New Zealand, and we have incredibly diverse flora and fauna. And in this video, I hope to show you the epic journey of this terrarium. I'm building a cave for some native cave wetter. These are only based here in New Zealand. Endemic. Stay tuned. To build this, I'm using Exoterra. Now, I actually got this off Facebook Marketplace for free. It had some soil and gravel in the bottom, so I had to clean it out and I wanted to start fresh. Thank goodness to Facebook Marketplace. I'm never gonna say no to that. Now, I'm using expanding foam for the background. Now, why am I using expanding foam? Well, firstly, it's gonna give you the background that you want, so you can either make it look like a cave or a tree trunk, and then you can paint it and do it however you please. It's also light, so it gives you some efficiency there rather than sticking super heavy rocks or branches or logs or anything like that you can replicate the same environment in a much more efficient manner now obviously what this is expanding foam expands so you put in as much as you can or try and be super cautious with it but otherwise you'll cut out what you don't need later now that little glass jar is going to hold a plant but we're going to get there all right 24 to 48 hours, it's dry. So let's start scraping it out and start crafting it. I'm basically cutting out things to make it a bit more realistic, to give me a bit more space, as well as actually cutting out some caves that the cave wetter can actually hide in. Now, when I think about cave wetter, I'm actually creating, I guess, more of a hollow log or hollow tree trunk rather than a cave itself, but it's gonna have cave environments for where cave wetters live naturally in New Zealand, and that is in dark, damp environments, hollow tree trunks, caves, nooks and crannies, under logs. All right, the next key part is silicon. Now silicon is what my decorative substrate is gonna stick to. Whether you use sand, soil, I'm using cocoa fiber. Cocoa fiber soil to be specific. Now why? Because this makes it look exactly like the inside of a tree trunk or a ponga log, which is exactly the stimulus I'm going for. Now you're going to need to do a few layers. The first coat essentially just covers the surface. After two to three days, you can have to go over and over and make sure you plug every single nook and cranny and hole that you can find. Now what I'm cutting here is I'm preparing for the base layer, but we're gonna get there. First, let's pick a plant. Now the plant is gonna go out of that glass cylinder that you saw earlier in the video. Now, the whole purpose of the plant growing on the inside of the log is to A, give them something to climb on, something to hide in, something to potentially eat, and it looks super dope. Man, we're getting close. We're getting super close to completion, and I'm excited. Right now is, I'm doing the final touches. I'm plugging all the holes, I'm adding some stimulus. Now what I'm doing is, I'm actually adding bits of pongalog. Pongalog itself, the natural element. So adding some super glue to all the areas that are still uncovered, that I couldn't quite cover. I had a plan for that, so I wasn't too worried. So I was getting bits of pongalog, as well as putting in the fern that I bought. Now this fern is gonna sit nicely in there like it basically is growing out of the terrarium and out of the hardscape itself. Now, let's see what it looks like. This looks epic. So I'm gonna clear out the bottom. This is all the cocoa fiber soil that's fallen to the bottom once I've tipped it up. I've added some bits to hide on, some natural bark, just to give them lots of nooks and crannies. Let's start with the hardscape. Clay balls for the bottom. This is the base layer. I'm gonna spread this out. This is gonna absorb all the moisture now this mesh is gonna protect the base layer from the soil and the purpose of a drainage layer is to prevent plant roots from rotting hygiene purposes and keeps it nice and clean. Now let's give it a quick mist so we can add the other elements.
So what else do I think should be on the bottom or inside a hollow tree trunk? Well, maybe some stones, definitely some moss, and that's exactly what I'm adding. After all that hard work, just some finer adjustments and tweaks to do before we go into the next steps. Apart from this being bioactive and essentially living, I have to add the cleanup crew. Now the cleanup crew is going to consist of isopods, millipedes and small beetles. And basically what these guys will do is they'll clean the soil, they'll eat all the dead vegetation, and I'm not going to lie to you, they'll probably become food for the cave weather at some stage. There are some final things to do before I add the cave wetter. I need to paint. This is the therapeutic part of the whole process for me. So here it is, the part that you've all been waiting for, the cave wetter reveal. This is a New Zealand cave wetter. Now in other parts of the world there are some similar species, the camel cricket or the cave cricket, but they're different. These guys are almost prehistoric, they're endemic to New Zealand, they're only located here, and the cave wetter comparing, or the difference between the other wetter around New Zealand is that, these guys don't bite, they don't have huge mandibles, so you can hold them, whereas other wetters look super scary, have huge mandibles and actually bite. Now I have five, and I'm not too sure of the sex, but we'll get there. So let's add these guys into their new home and see how they go. So what do we expect from a behavior perspective? Well, from the first couple of weeks, I noticed that they're really, really cryptic the way they move. Apparently they can't hear, but they're really sensitive to vibrations and also light. So if I shine the light on them, they'll generally move. Or if I open or move abruptly and maybe send some vibrations through the terrarium, they'll also move. They spend a lot of their time cleaning their long antenna, as you would have seen at the very beginning. And they also like to eat in their almost carnivorous in nature. Now I've tried a few different bobs with regards to dietary requirements and I'm seeing that they love mealworms more than other things. But I'm going to keep exploring and I'm going to keep monitoring the species and hopefully breed them in captivity. That is the end and ultimate goal. After a wet and stormy evening, I went out to see how the cave wetter would behave after fresh rainfall. Though this is their main source of hydration, I miss them twice a day to make sure that they get enough water. Now as cave wetter are very, very nocturnal, meaning that they hide all day and only come out at night, this is the best time to view them. Two weeks later and they're thriving. They're adjusting well and they seem to be enjoying their new environment. Now this was a late arrival, this is from Timu, it's essentially a little cave light that I ordered. Now Timu is basically the Alibaba on steroids, basically this light is battery powered and the purpose of this is to basically put it in the terrarium to give it a more cave like featurette. Now it was wiry, it was a meter in length, but it worked and I was stoked to see that it worked because it was about $3 and it arrived all safe and sound. Now the install was simple. Although I would have rather have much done this at an earlier stage, but I'm impatient, it arrived late, I had to press on. All I needed was super glue, and some nooks and crannies. 
and I just applied it and put it in areas around the terrarium where it would make sense. Now it's not a Christmas tree, it's not fairy lights. It gave the replica of exactly what I wanted. I wanted very, very dim lighting to kind of go around so that I could kind of view the cave weather without turning all the lights on or using a torch. So something a little bit less harsh on their eyes and their vision and something that still looks super, super dope, especially on camera. And I hope you guys like it. So my first key learnings in the first two weeks of having cave wetter is that they love mealworms. They absolutely tear these to pieces. Now, I'm hoping to actually capture these guys eating on film, which I will do over the next two, three months, as well as hopefully some breeding activity, but we'll see. I might need more time for that. Some other key learnings is that they're super cryptic in nature. They're super sensitive to vibrations, but they're also very, very active. So they're always out and about. And I think it's because I've created a nice, damp, dark environment for them so that they can be out and about rather than hiding all day. So stay tuned for what's to come. Like I said, there'll be some breeding elements as well as keeping these guys as pets in captivity. Cave are incredible animals and we have amazing species here in New Zealand. I'm Max. I have some fantastic beasts and I love creating content. And I love learning more and more about these animals every single day. And I hope you enjoy it. So stay tuned for more.